Hey guys, welcome to the show today. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, this is a really uh, important conversation from my friend Reed Uberman and I a couple years ago now discussing what is now going to start being a recycled popular talking point as candidates begin to announce their run for president for 2024. Every time an election season rolls around or candidates begin campaigning, you will hear the progressive left and the secular left make this same argument that if you were really pro-life, you would vote for Democrats whose policies have been proven to decrease the abortion right by addressing the underlying causes and socioeconomic reasons that women choose abortion in the first place. So real pro-lifers actually vote for pro-abortion Democrats. <laughs> uh, and of course, you should make it sound just as stupid as it is. And yet, despite the asininity of this argument, Every election cycle, I have well-meaning friends who I thought had more moral clarity send me these kind of videos and arguments saying, uh, look at this, I didn't think about it this way, and I have to prevent myself from screaming at my phone. Well, one of these arguments was made a couple years ago by Phil Vischer, the creator of VeggieTales, another reason for you to not give your money to VeggieTales or anything that they make. Phil Vischer and Lecrae were both spouting this argument. And I thought, given the election madness and season that is about to begin again, I would air this conversation between my friend Reed Uberman and I from his Indie Thinker podcast to do a full and brutal takedown of Phil Vischer and the other wokey woke progressive Christians who make this argument, who do more to uphold the status quo and the culture of death than they've ever done to protect the preborn child. Buckle up, you're in for a treat. I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, um, <laughs> yeah, I found it up almost appalling, but I don't want to be pearl clutching here, that uh, Phil Vischer would, would release a video mocking Republicans for being one issue voters. Now, That's right. I understand. I don't know if you have you seen this video that I'm talking about. I have. Yeah. OK, okay. so I, I know I know it's probably and it was released a while back, but I've been uh, refreshing my outrage with with watching it recently just because I realized that I have met these Christians. These are the Christians that voted for Joe Biden because they had a sympathetic view um, against uh, the rhetoric of Donald Trump. And and I even have, I know Christian friends um, in evangelical circles who put together coalitions to vote for Joe Biden, um, to have Republicans turn blue to vote for Joe Biden because of Trump. And I and I want to just say to them now, like, how how you feeling now? How you living now? How's the okay, economy? Yeah looking for you now. Not to mention the fact that the moment he got in office, he immediately signed something overturning what Trump had done um, on on the uh, pro-life issue. So um, so not only is that video, and I would encourage anybody, I, I hate to do this because it doesn't deserve any more views than it's already gotten, but I would encourage people to go look at it and, and to really try to wrestle with their own conscience about what's being stated in this video. So Phil Vischer, for those who don't know, is the creator of VeggieTales, and he, uh, in a sense, not really mockingly, but almost mockingly, mocks Christian Republicans for being one-issue voters. The very first comment on that video Video said something like, I wish more Christians would think about these issues like you have. And I see, and I, and again, I'll reiterate this. I know these Christians in church who have just absolutely adopted the culture um, as their operating principle of theology rather than actually grabbing a Bible in a conscience. So um, what was your response when you saw that video? I mean, I had friends from college that I went to Westmont with who were like, isn't this such a thoughtful video? I was like, no, this is blatant bigotry. Like, oh my gosh, like open your Bible, like, you know, be a little more thoughtful. And Lecrae reshared this. Lecrae loves Phil Vischer. Lecrae sh should actually be under church discipline right now, by the way, um, for campaigning with Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, the two, 
the two pro-abortion and fantasizing maniacs in Georgia who got both Senate seats, which now has endangered pre-born children in the state of Georgia significantly more. And guess what? Because those guys both run their Senate seats, this was a special election runoff in January, you remember, that was going to dictate yep. the balance of power in the Senate. Because they both won their Senate seats, the Senate goes 50-50 with Kamala Harris, the tie-breaking vote. Lecrae helped give one of the greatest wow. gifts to the party of death in the abortion industry in decades which is to put the most pro-abortion politician in American history, Kamala Harris, as the tie-breaking vote in the Senate. That's thanks to Lecrae. He should be under church of discipline right now for that. And he says he's pro-life. Pathetic. Phil Vischer says he's pro-life. Pathetic. Phil Vischer is a bigot. And let me tell you what I mean by that, because now people are like, oh, uh, resorting to ad hominem attacks. No, I'm not. What is bigotry? Bigotry is the discrimination against someone else for being different. Right, Reed? It's the, it's discriminating against someone else for being different. Yeah, I know, ideological bigotry. Well, well, particularly though, if that if that discrimination is based off of immutable characteristics, right? Hmm. That's why racism is so disgusting and why it's an affront to human dignity. Because our black brothers and sisters don't have any control over their skin color, right? And then if you discriminate against a woman because she's a woman. That's particularly nasty because she has no control over her gender. So, so bigotry becomes the most nasty forms of it are when it's based off of something you have no control over, immutable characteristics. Right. And so pro-choicers are actually bigots, right? Because they discriminate against the unborn based off of their size, their level of development, the fact that they're in the location of a womb. And because they're more dependent on their mothers, these are immutable characteristics. So Phil Vischer is a soft bigot because he says he's pro-life. But he doesn't support. He doesn't believe that the unborn is intrinsically valuable enough to warrant political protection. Yeah. And and why does he not believe that they're valuable enough to warrant political protection? Because he said, "Vote for Democrats, the very party who denies political protection to the unborn." Now, now, just to not to push back, but just to, for clarification, did he actually endorse voting for Democrats? I know he was trying to injure. Uh, it was that's the implication, right? But did he actually say that? Yeah, when you create a video as a Christian as to why it's justified to vote for Democrats, okay, dude, I mean, maybe you didn't say vote for Joe Biden. But but by the way, Lecrae essentially did. Lecrae was helping campaign for pro-abortion Democrats, which is a tacit, which is a, as an approval of their of their run. Yeah. You want people to vote for them. So maybe Phil Fisher didn't say that, but he he makes he he makes an apologetics uh, case for why it's okay. For Christians to vote for Democrats, the very party yeah. that denies political protection. By the way, and as a side note, using false statistics, he suggested that Roe v. Wade would only uh, impact uh, abortions by 12 percent. And then like health care in Maryland would impact abortions by like 37 percent. Like nationally, bro, or are we talking like in a county? You're just lying or and then he doesn't even cite the, where the statistics come from. That's right. So let's dive into that. But first, I just wanted to say that Phil Vischer is actually a bigot. Like if you say that a certain class of human beings are human beings, but that they don't deserve protection in our laws, uh, then you're a soft bigot because you're saying that, yeah, they have some dignity, like they have some value, Reed, but like not enough value to get protection in our laws, then like you're a soft bigot. Like yeah. maybe it's not hard bigotry that says that the unborn isn't a person, but it's it's still soft bigotry. Okay. Yeah, so so what does he say about, about this? He says, vote for Democrats because Democratic policies decrease abortion. And look at this chart I found over here somewhere. It shows that when Democrats are in control, their policies decrease the abortion rate. Well, firstly, like you said, it's actually a straw man because the the goal of the pro-life movement, Reed, is not to decrease abortions. (laughs) It's to make abortion illegal. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And unthinkable, unthinkable, meaning that not only do we want to pass laws to protect the pre-born, like we actually want to communicate to the next generation um, and, and rebuild the social fabric and the moral compass of the country so that they'll hate abortion. Like we want abortion to be as, as horrific in point. the minds of Americans as slavery is today. Yeah. That means making it unthinkable. So question, Reed, can you make abortion unthinkable as long as you vote for the Democratic Party, allow them to dwell in positions of political power when their platform refers to murdering the preborn as reproductive health care? Yeah. As, as long as you allow the euphemisms of choice to disciple the next generation of Americans, they will continue to think about abortion as as merely reproductive health care rather than genocide. And so so law functions as a teacher, Reed. Right. Aristotle made this point. Aristotle yeah, once said Paul that too. statecraft is soul craft. 
Statecraft is soulcraft. What did he mean by that? Well, he meant that the state through its policies and legislation dictate what kind of behaviors are acceptable and not acceptable in a civilized society. So law functions as a teacher. Law teaches the society and particularly the next generation that, hey, these behaviors are evil. These behaviors are good. Right. The law wants to encourage the good and punish evil. Right. Yeah. And the Bible talks about that. Uh, the, and, you know, the Bible said the, the, the state doesn't bear the sword in vain. So there's a role for the state to punish evil and evildoers and to promote the good. And so um, question, Reed, do you think America was ready for abolition? No, America wasn't ready for no. abolition. Uh, we, when, didn't we fight a war over it? What was it called? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, the Civil War. I guess we were pretty divided and we the social fabric was not ready for the abolition of slavery. But guess what? Lincoln and the abolitionist Reed stepped in anyways and, and said, we are banning slavery now because this is disgusting and evil. Come on. Um, and, and then it took a hundred years yeah. to rebuild the social fabric, didn't it? So uh, slavery gets banned in, uh, um, uh, is it 1865? 1864, yeah, I think you're right with that, yeah. 65. Civil Rights Act, 1964, right? Yeah. Uh, 99 years. <laughs> Yeah. Between between when slavery is made illegal and when blacks actually have full equality before the law. So that took a long time, didn't it? But wasn't it a good thing that the politics stepped in, that the state stepped in, that laws were passed? Yeah. Saying you cannot treat black individuals like this. But I want you and your listeners to think about something. It would have taken a lot longer for blacks to achieve full equality before the law if we hadn't banned slavery, Reed. Right. So it still took us 99 years with banning slavery. How much longer do you think it would have taken to get to the Civil Rights Act yeah. if we hadn't used the law through political power, through Republicans wielding political power to ban slavery in 1864? Yeah. And, and just to reiterate, the goal here is not less abortions. The goal here is to dis- to get rid of abortion. And to make it illegal totally. and unthinkable. Completely. So you can't make abortion illegal, Reed, by voting for the party whose freaking platform says abortion through all nine months of pregnancy and funded with your tax dollars, you Republican bigot, Reed. You can't make abortion legal by voting for that party. No. And so while we might celebrate some decreases in abortion, Reed, um, that's not our goal. And then you also can't accomplish our second goal of making it unthinkable. If you vote for the very party who describes that procedure as reproductive justice yeah. and helps craft legis- uh, who helps cra- craft curriculum for our public schools that say abortion is reproductive health care and women need abortion to be fully equal to men. So you so it's a straw man. You can't actually achieve what you want by voting for Democrats. But the stats and the claims read, they're actually false. The claim that that abortions decrease under Democrats ignores the fact that abortions have been decreasing, read, across partisan presidents. That's right. Uh, so you had Reagan, right? And then you had Clinton and you had the Bushes. Um, you had Obama. The whole time, the abortion rate was decreasing. Yeah. So so it's like you can't purely um, uh, you can't purely uh, apply that purely to Democrats. Yeah. And I, and I looked this up too, Seth. I wanted to mention this. I looked this up too. Um, so hold on to that thought. I looked this up too. Uh, multiple articles confirm that it is it's certainly not Planned Parenthood tr- not trying to do their job that abortions are going down. The reason abortion is going down is just simply that people are having less children. It has nothing to do with the abortion industry not uh, going into high gear and continuing to do everything that they've done. Done since uh, since they've been in motion, so um, so it's just absolutely a false claim that it doesn't matter who's in office that abortions are going to keep on going at pace. It just simply has to do with a more cultural phenomenon than it's than it does with who's president. It's it's a few things. People are having less children. Pro life laws are actually effective in saving many children as well. And thirdly, yeah. the invention of the ultrasound and ultrasonography that has forced the American mm. public to look at what the child looks like at eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve weeks old has humanized the child in a way that we haven't been able to before. Um, and that significantly decreased the abortion rate. And also pregnancy resource centers now outnumber abortion clinics two to one. And there's been an 80% growth of pregnancy resource centers between 1980 and today. And so these are clinics that provide all of their resources for free and all of the non-controversial healthcare services that Planned Parenthood provides minus the baby murdering part. And so more pregnancy centers, more ultrasonography, more humanizing pictures of the child, more pro-life laws and people having less children. On top of all of that, Reed, Bill Clinton in 2000, when he became president, said that states no longer had to report their abortion data. 
Mm-hmm. And so, so states are not required to report their abortion data. Want to guess the names of any of the states, Read that don't report their abortion data? California, New York, Virginia, <laughs> some of the states that kill the most preborn children. So now we just kind of have me. to guess. We kind of yeah. have to guess the numbers of abortions. So Bill Clinton and Democrats weren't responsible for decreasing the abortion. States just stopped reporting their abortion data and then got credited with decreasing the abortion rate. So the whole claim is fallacious the whole way through, yeah. but, but primarily because it's a straw man. We don't want to decrease abortions. We want to ban it, and you can't ban it by voting for the party who literally say at the top of their platform, we're going to protect abortion. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris Reid have said that they're going to codify it into federal law yeah. so that states who pass pro life laws, every single one will be deemed unconstitutional, despite the fact that many of them are already deemed unconstitutional. Well, you can't make abortion illegal by doing that. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is that is that Phil Vischer ignores the fact that law functions as a teacher, as I said. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to humanize the child, restore dignity and legal protections to the unborn child, the law is actually part of the role. The law plays a role in in humanizing and and, and, and restoring the social fabric of America. Phil Vischer is actually using a, he's actually using a racist slavery strategy in that argument. And Mm. I'll finish with this, just to really make sure your listeners understand what a bigot Phil Vischer is. So did you know that many racists um, Reed, they actually argued um, whilst, while during the abolitionist movement, while Lincoln and others were trying to abolish slavery. Do you know what they would argue many times? They would say that, hey, in states that favor abolition, we're actually seeing an increase in the rise of racial violence. Hmm. And uh, and and the and huh. the death of, of black individuals. Why yeah. read? Well, because those pesky Republicans, those GOP people, they're creating tension amongst the culture and societies that are very comfortable to slavery because they're very accustomed to it. And by favoring abolition, it's creating racial tension. And so there, you're actually more likely to get increased rates of racial violence in states that favor abolition. And so if you really want to decrease the instances of racial violence, Reed, you'll vote for Democrats, the party of slavery, because while they're enslaving black human beings and calling their murder, um, you know, just plantation care and and economic rights, um, don't worry, they'll, they'll take care of their slaves a little better. But it's really it's really actual racial murder and racially motivated violence that's happening in states that favor abolition. Yeah. So reject the GOP's plan of abolishing slavery and vote for Democrats. Very similar thing when Phil Vischer says, hey, if you want to decrease the rates of fetal violence, you'll actually vote for Democrats who policies have been shown to decrease the abortion rate. What a stupid argument to make. <laughs> and so this this guy can only make that argument read by assuming that the unborn is not fully human or possessed of the same rights as you and I, because we know that Phil Vischer in his sanctimonious piety and his moral clarity on slavery in 2021, he wrote the piece in 2020, would never say that he couldn't be a single issue voter in 1858 or 1860, right? We all know Phil Vischer would be like, oh yeah, obviously slavery functions as a litmus test of the Republic. And I would totally be a single issue voter. In fact, I would probably say that Christians had a moral obligation to vote for Abraham Lincoln because of the scourge that slavery represented on our country. Yeah. Well, one could argue, Reed, that abortion is more evil than slavery, because while it's wrong for the same reasons, slavery doesn't always result in the murder of slaves. Abortion always results in the murder of the unborn. Yeah. Um, and it's killed significantly more babies than slavery ever did. And so one could actually make the moral case that it's more evil. And so if Phil Vischer would claim, and we all know he would claim this, that that Christians should have been single issue voters in 1850 in order to get rid of slavery, but he doesn't claim the same thing on abortion today, then he's assumed that the unborn is not as deserving as rights and protection in our laws as the black born people who cl- who he claim are intrinsically valuable enough to have protection in our laws. So he's a fetal bigot. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope that episode was helpful. You're going to hear this argument made a lot in the next season. So go ahead and send this short episode to some of your friends, your pro-abortion, progressive Christian friends who vote for Biden because they were drinking Trump derangement syndrome and uh, couldn't couldn't bring themselves to vote for a pro-life president who ended up proving his pro-life credentials, of course, by getting three Supreme Court justices on the highest court in the land that overturned Roe versus Wade. And uh, send this to your pastors, send this to people who are very confused politically. Um, And let's try to bring them back into the fold to build the kind of unity and coalitions that we need to 
to finally bring an end to abortion in America. Uh, if you like the show, give us a rating and review. Hit five stars. Send the show to a friend. We really appreciate that. It helps us reach more people. Go subscribe on YouTube and Rumble for when I am one day and inevitably taken off of YouTube. Until next week, I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. Thank <laughs> you.